Uh, as Carla told you, no doubt, I am the board chair of Free Speech for People. Uh, Free Speech for People is a nonpartisan national nonprofit founded the day of the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision uh, almost eight years ago. Uh, our mission is to reclaim our rights as citizens and to restore our democracy and fight corruption. Over the past 18 months, uh, as part of that mission, we have been leading a campaign to begin impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump for his egregious constitutional violations. So we, we are so pleased uh, to be here today with uh, Need to Impeach uh, and with Tom Steyer. And we, we want to thank Tom and the whole team at Need to Impeach for putting this wonderful uh, event together. Um, also pleased to see such an incredible turnout. This is great. We are well over capacity. So thank you all for coming out on this hot July night. Um, and one more thing I, I want to say that we uh, at Free Speech for People and, and all of us in this movement are very proud to announce today, which is uh, our new book uh, is going to be published by Melville House Publishing, August 14th. The name of the book is The Constitution Demands It, The Case for Impeachment of Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> So the, uh, th this is a well-timed event in that respect. The book announcement was just made today. Uh, and you can pre-order it at our new website, the, uh, imp sorry, impeachmentproject.org. Uh, and there is a uh, flyer over there, I'm sure one for everyone in the room, um, that if you go there and pre-order the book, you, you will help push this book onto the bestseller lists and raise the conversation in the nation uh, about impeachment. Um, I also want to take just a minute uh, and, and recognize two very important people, uh, my co-authors on The Constitution Demands It, uh, Ron Fine, who is the primary author of the book and the legal director of Free Speech for People, uh, standing right over there by that. Yeah. Yes, the gentleman standing by the beautiful sign. And standing by the similar beautiful <laughs> sign, uh, our other co-author, the co-founder, and the president of Free Speech for People, John Boniface. So we have once before in modern times had a president who was willing to publicly declare that he is above the law. And when that president acted out on that belief, when he obstructed an investigation into violations of his campaign, Congress took action. Congress put together articles of impeachment. Congress held impeachment hearings. And ultimately, Congress forced the president to avoid inevitable impeachment and inevitable conviction in the Senate to resign. That was almost a half century ago. It was one of Congress's finest hours. Democrats, Republicans came together, held the president accountable, removed him from office, and firmly established one of the most important principles in our constitutional democracy. And that is that no one, not even the president, especially not the president, is above the law. And now that sacred principle is challenged, is at risk, as it never has been before in this country. And our current Congress appears poised to do nothing, to let that principle expire. And what we're talking about today with Donald Trump is a constitutional crisis that is in many ways far worse, far more dangerous than what we faced with Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon committed serious impeachable offenses that affected much about his presidency. But in many respects, Richard Nixon was a conventional president. 
He made many decisions based on the informed and uh, what he and his advisors believe to be the best interests of the country. Donald Trump is different. Donald Trump's impeachable offenses affect every aspect of his presidency. Donald Trump isn't capable, as far as we can tell, of making decisions based on what's good for the American people or what the Constitution requires. Donald Trump's decision making is driven by two fundamental forces. One, his and his family members' financial profit, and two, the need to satisfy his ever delicate and needy ego. What psychologists and psychiatrists tell us is his malignant narcissism. And so, With Donald Trump, we are faced with a barrage of impeachable offenses. He has been violating the constitutional corruption clauses, the so-called foreign and domestic emoluments clauses, since the day he was sworn in by taking, by demanding, by encouraging payments to him through his business by foreign governments, payments from the federal government, and state governments and other benefits to him and his business, essentially using the presidency of the United States as a personal profit-making machine. And he has been engaged in a sustained course of obstruction of justice in an effort to snuff out, to shut down, to undermine the investigations into him and his campaign for conspiring with the Russians to interfere with our presidential election and help him become president. And that goes back just as far. Since the earliest days of his presidency, he attempted to influence James Comey's handling of the investigation. He attempted to get him to shut it down. And when that didn't work, he fired Comey. And it has continued every day to today as he continues to try to undermine special counsel Mueller's investigation. Uh, Trump has been engaged in a consistent pattern, uh, I, I've just learned continuing today, of abusing the presidential pardon power, often abusing it to embolden and encourage equal protection violations, violations of people's constitutional rights, as in the outrageous Sheriff Aparo pardon. He's also been engaged in a systematic undermining of constitutional rights, particularly the right of equal protection. Just to name a few of the innumerable examples with his cruel, inhumane, and utterly lawless policy of separating migrant families, taking their little children and putting them into cages. His relentless pursuit of a discriminatory Muslim ban, his encouraging police officers to engage in police brutality and Fourth Amendment violations, his giving aid and comfort to white supremacists and neo-Nazis. The list goes on and on. He has recklessly courted nuclear war, often undermining his own State Department's diplomatic efforts. He has engaged and continues to engage in a daily systematic undermining of our First Amendment freedom of press and freedom of speech rights as he intimidates, as he manipulates the press. So in any other presidency, as I'm sure most of you can imagine, any one of these violations would have long ago brought about an impeachment investigation and probably been the end of that presidency. These are clear-cut impeachable offenses. Many of them are the kinds of things that the founding fathers, the, the framers of our Constitution, specifically recognized as being impeachable offenses. Taking money from foreign governments as a federal official, especially as the president, was something they were particularly concerned about. And they spoke specifically about what the remedy would be if a president ever did that, and the remedy would be impeachment. 
the uh, obstruction of justice, well recognized by Congress uh, historically as being a basis for uh, impeachment. In fact, it was the lead basis for the impeachment articles against Richard Nixon. Trump's use of the Justice Department and law enforcement agencies as a political tool to go after his political enemies and settle personal vendettas, also well recognized as impeachable conduct and another grounds uh, on which articles of impeachment were brought against Richard Nixon. Um, so we're, we're not talking about debatable offenses here. These are absolutely clear cut and the evidence about them is public and clear cut. Often before your eyes, you watch Donald Trump engage in obstruction of justice. You watch him engage in undermining constitutional rights on national television. And yet, in the face of all this, through some toxic mix of Republican mendacity and Democratic cowardice, we are told it's not time. Don't talk about impeachment. We're not ready for that. That is the conventional wisdom. That's what we're told by the entire political media establishment that this is not the time for impeachment, that it's too soon, that the evidence is not in, that we need to wait. Well, they are wrong. They are simply wrong. The, the framers could not have possibly imagined a character like Donald Trump, but, but, in the most important respects, he is exactly the type of president they feared most, and he's exactly the type of president which caused them to insist upon and view as one of the most important parts of the Constitution that they put together, the power of impeachment. He is corrupted by his financial interests. He is under the sway and beholden to foreign governments because of those financial interests and because of the manner in which he was elected, and he believes, just as the British monarchs that the framers had so recently declared independence from, that he is above the law, that he can do whatever he wants and that he doesn't serve the people he serves himself. This is exactly the president for which the founders gave us a remedy, and that remedy is impeachment. And so when the political class tells us we need to wait. We need to respond. We can't wait. We can't wait. The damage that this lawless president is inflicting on our democracy, on our constitution, on the fabric of our nation is growing by the day. The risk of more major catastrophes grow by the day. And we know he's already inflicted major catastrophes on us. We don't know all of them. I'm sure there are some that will come to light, but we're witnessing right now a major catastrophe on the border as President Trump is ripping migrant families apart and putting small children in cages. And there is more to come. It is time for Congress to step up. It's time for Congress to recognize that the longer they let this go on, the more they embolden this president and the more they set the precedent for future presidents that authoritarianism and lawlessness is a free pass from Congress. So it's time for all members of Congress, Democratic, Republican, to put country above politics, above party. It's time for them to stand on principle and begin an impeachment investigation now. Thank you. Thanks,